everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name is Morgan and this is Rue. Today we are going to be covering the topic of dremeling your dog's nails, which can be a task, especially when they're older. You can learn this at any age because it is using positive reinforcement. It just might take some time. I recommend nail dremeling when they are young. I started with Rue, I want to say at about 17 weeks old. I don't know what she's doing in the background over there, but that's okay. <laughs> so all you need for this video is one, a dog, two, a nail dremel. This is the one I'm going to be using. I actually have the, the battery charging right now because I think it's pretty much empty. Some treats that they really like. For today's video, I'm using just regular freeze-dried chicken from Pure Bites. Hi! So, <laughs> this can be a process that takes months for them to truly get comfortable with, but I really like dremeling because there's a less chance of hitting the quick, which is the portion in the nail that has nerves and blood vessels. So when you trim your dog's nails with regular nail clippers, there's always a risk that you might hit that. It's a little... You can still hit it with a Dremel, it's just a little bit more difficult and it's a little bit of a slower process, that way you can see. I also recommend doing this in a well-lit area <laughs> because you need to be able to see the dog's nails and the dog's quicks. Some dogs is easier than others. Rue, it's pretty easy to do because she has white nails, so that means I can see where her quick is. Dogs that have um, black nails or dark nails, it's a little bit more challenging and for that I would recommend just taking it a little bit slower and just seeing where you're comfortable with trimming it down to. There's a little bit of a pulpy section before you reach the quick, um, so just pay close attention to where you are on the nail before you completely just like buzz the whole thing off. <laughs> I chose a day, which is today, where it's pouring rain out unfortunately, so Rue hasn't gotten a walk. You're gonna see her be a little bit testier than she would normally be, um, and that's okay because every day is different with these dogs. We're doing this today, and wish me luck. I have a little bit of an easier time with your dog. I would recommend taking them for a walk beforehand, a nice tiring walk, that way they're a little bit less likely to um, try to run around or like run away from you. It's optional that you use a collar on your dog, especially with positive reinforcement. I try not to hold her there. I try to let her have a little bit of free will. Um, that way if she's uncomfortable with something, she can let me know without it getting to be like too anxiety provoking for her because a Dremel is loud, it makes noise, it's buzzing on their, what is pretty sensitive to them. So they might react a little bit differently. With that, I will get started. So we've got our Dremel, we've got our treats. Rue is pretty desensitized to the Dremel, so if I turn it on, it's probably not gonna freak her out nearly as much as it did when I first got her, or first tried Dremeling her nails. But <laughs> I'll still go through the motions of when I was trying to teach her how to be okay with the Dremel. This Dremel has a off function, a high function, and a low function. When I first started training Rue, I got some treats ready, which I have here. You can break them up into pretty small bites. That way you get like more bang for your buck and your dog is more willing to work with you. Like a bunch of small pieces, don't go after that Rue. And in one hand I have the chicken and I start to feed her that to her. In the other hand I turn the Dremel on. And you can phrase, She's got off because I dropped a piece of chicken. Come here, come here. You wanna also do this on the couch, on the floor, wherever you wanna do this, wherever you're comfortable. I'm comfortable and I think she's more comfortable if I do this on the couch, so that's why we're doing this on the couch. So again, I turn on my Dremel and I feed her a piece of chicken. I would recommend just doing a few short training sessions, just turning your Dremel on and giving them pieces of chicken or whatever they really like because that'll build a positive reinforcement in their brain between hearing this noise and getting something yummy. Uh, 
Um, and you can try a couple of the different speeds and whatnot. You can pretty much start reaching for their paw as soon as they start ignoring the noise, and they will start ignoring the noise. There's another piece of chicken. The cat's gonna try to eat the chicken too. I'm gonna turn this on high now and let her have a piece of chicken. As I said, this might take a week or so of every day just turning the drum on, feeding them a piece of chicken or whatever they like for them to really understand that this is going to be a pleasant experience. Um, again, it's loud, it spins, it makes noise, it's kind of frightening for them. I let her sniff it while it's not on. I touch it to her while it's not on. I just didn't really like that. She knows that it spins and scary. So that's something we can work on. I'm going to touch the Dremel to her while I feed her a piece of chicken. I'm going to touch it to her paw. It's not on, so it's not spinning. It's not making any scary noises. I'm going to touch it to her paws while I'm feeding her this piece of chicken. I'm letting her break off little tiny pieces of it while it's in my hand. I show it to her. I turn it on again while she's eating this piece of chicken. I shut it off. I touch her paws front and back. She just wants me to give her this piece of chicken. She really likes this. Yeah, see? Good girl. Turn it on, different speed. I bring it down so she can see, but I don't want her to touch it. And then I turn it off. It'd be another training session or two until they get used to how you drum all their nails. Come back up here. Again, I let her kind of leave and do what she will um, throughout when I'm drumming her nails. This isn't a quick process of training them this. Um, it's just not. But it, the long-term benefits are great, especially since you're able to touch your dog's nails after. See, now I'm going to ask her for her paw. And I'm going to hold her paw and give her a piece of chicken. You know, I might hold up the Dremel, feed her another piece of chicken, and touch her paw. Good girl. Good girl. You can also use your clicker, but I find it a little bit cumbersome to like manage all these things that you're doing. The treat, the Dremel, the dog. Um, obviously, Bruce is a very good girl about this, so it's not a huge deal. The next step is, this is the way I find it easiest to do it. She's going over the side where I have the chicken. So I'll move over. I'll move over and let her be on this side of me. I bring her over. And then I gently like scoop her and I grab her closer to me. I find this the easiest way that um, I can have her do this. Some dogs will let you do this while they're sleeping. She's not at that point yet. Feed her the piece of chicken. I hold her paw. I touch it. Give her some rubs and some love, and I tell her she's a good girl. It's probably going to be a long video, I'm sorry. Then I just pick up her paw. I turn the drum on for a minute, let her look at it. She doesn't want to sit, but that's okay. Are you going to really freak out over this? I hold her paw. I turn the drum on low. I find it easier to start with the lowest setting. They might freak out at this point. And I touch it to their paw. And I say, good girl. And I give her a piece of chicken. This overall should be a pleasant experience for your dog. You don't want this to turn stressful. As soon as it starts seeming like it's really starting to seem stressful and they don't want to do it anymore, um, end it. Or end it on a good note and only do one little touch to their paw. Thank you. I'm going to hold the paw gently. Can you sit? We'll start with this. Because this is closer. I find the one that's closest to you is easiest to do. I'll turn the Dremel on. Relax, relax. She's just not wanting to do this today for one reason or another. Good girl. And we give them lots of praise when they allow you to do anything with their nails. So I only do a little, I just took a tiny, 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 tiny bit off and on the low setting. And I'll reward her for that because she didn't give me much of a fuss. 
and then I will start to do the next one. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I actually do these like twice a week. So they aren't too bad. All I need to do is take a tiny, 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 tiny bit off of every single nail. So at this point I can do a couple at a time and she doesn't really give me a, much of a hard time about it. So I shut the drum roll off and I give her a treat for being a very good girl during that. Dogs are kind of like people. They only have so much patience, so don't test your dog's patience. They're looking like they're done. Don't make this a fearful experience. Don't force them to do anything that they are really truly uncomfortable to do because that will backfire and this will make it that will make it an unpleasant experience for both dog owner and dog. Obviously, if your dog has super long nails, definitely bringing them to a vet and allowing the vet to clip their nails or a groomer is a very good alternative because if you allow a dog's nails to grow out too long, it could cause joint problems or severe pain in your dog and you really don't want that. We all love her. We all love our dogs and that's why we have them. <laughs> Definitely be careful about that as well. Pick up her other paw. She's just chilling right now. She's pretty much laying in my lap. So I'll feed her another piece of chicken. The drum will turn on. She's, she doesn't like this paw done as much. Um, I'm not sure why, but that's okay. Good girl. Maybe because it's in front of her. So I'm just, I'm just, I just take my time. I don't rush her into anything. Good girl. Good girl. And I'll take a little bit off. Um, always like go for a rounded edge, which like go around the top and around the sides of the nail as well. And I'll feed her a treat for that. Again, she's pretty much free to leave at any point in time. I'm not really holding her here. I'm not like grabbing under her collar. Sometimes when you start, it's easy to put a collar on them and have a leash attached. That way if they like go running away, you can kind of grab them back and like retry um, because they might be, you might have startled them. How I do her back nails is a little bit more difficult. Um, generally I'll sit on the floor, but her back nails need get done less frequently than her front nails, which might be the problem of why she's a little bit more finicky about her back nails. Um, it's a little bit harder to reach them usually I sit here like this and I do the nail I'll see if she'll allow me to do it um, you see you can tell she's a little bit less comfortable allowing me to do that but again just even just touching her feet and feeding her a treat um, to get her comfortable with me doing that is goes a long way Come here. or um, this is another position that I find is a little bit easier to do the back nails. If you need to do your back nails, it's just to reach around your dog. The floor, again, might be easier to do this on. And just lift up her back foot and dremel. Again, she's not super comfortable because this isn't really a comfortable position. Um, good girl. Good girl. So I'll just do a tiny, tiny bit at a time. And feed her too. How I drum on my dog's nails, um, or Boo's nails. The Senji, she's a little bit of a stubborn, stubborn little animal, so I've definitely needed to have a lot of patience with her, and you can definitely do this with any dog. As I said, it's just easier to start when they're younger, and it'll take a little bit less time when they're younger. I will show you what her feet look like in this next video clip, but other than that, Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, I will be trying to put out a video weekly. So, um, You can see that the reddish pink part is her quick. So we're careful not to get that low. She wants to eat the treats. Her back ones are a little bit longer than her front ones again because I don't trim them nearly as often. So you can see that white part is where I want to take the nail off. Oh, the pink part is not. So I just trimmed those. I didn't do her back ones yet. As I said, she has got clear nails, so it's easier. It's easier to see. So you can see that that white part is the nail, and you want to take that white part off and leave the pink.